Hello. My name is Jesse Horn and welcome to the Shuko Lab Space. We are a molecular engineering and computational biophysics group and let's check out our lab. So we are a biomolecular engineering group. So my focus is on machine learning and uh, going from a genetic code, so a uh, DNA or genetic code to a protein's function. So proteins are like nature's little machines and their code is from DNA. So uh, small changes in DNA or the code might have substantial effects on the protein's function. So for that, uh, we could re-engineer crops, uh, novel therapeutics, so all of that can go with uh, predicting a protein's function from its genetic code. Uh, also, I'm involved in a lot of transfer learning, so that is where you're taking uh, knowledge from a, an existing system, so you construct the model and all of that, and then you can transfer that to a similar but different system. So for example, if we wanted to re-engineer a transporter in one type of crop, we don't have to completely start from scratch when we do that for another crop. We can transfer that across uh, and save a lot of the time and labor in constructing that model. So here's my workspace uh, where I do the coding and the machine learning models and everything. So I'm signed into Shadowfax right now, which is the group's uh, computing cluster. So the nice thing about it is that it is the group's own computer cluster, so we don't share it with anyone else on campus. It's just lab members that have access to it. And what's really nice about it is that we can generate data, analyze data, and we're not waiting on um, the queue or waiting for other people to be done with it. So Shadowfax, that's the name for our group's own cluster that is uh, ran and managed by just our group. Uh, and now I'd like to pass it over to Jiming and she'll tell us about her research. Hello, I'm Jiming. I'm a fourth year PhD student in the Shupa group. And yeah, um, I work on plant hormone signaling. So we have several different custom computers in the lab. When we join the group, we're given the option of basically building our own computer to work at, to like, as an office workstation. It can make them powerful enough to sort of do most of your data analysis on it. Okay, so this is a plant hormone receptor. So this protein is called a strigolactone receptor. Um, so it senses this plant hormone called strigolactone. So that's that little green thing that's moving around there. And this is from a project where I was comparing the, the binding mechanisms. So I was looking at how this little green thing binds to the binding pocket of this protein and the parasite witchweed, and then comparing it to how it binds to a similar protein in Arabidopsis, which we use as a model organism for host plants, and seeing how they're... Well, number one, seeing how the binding mechanism happens in the first place, since that's was a big unknown, and also looking at how this binding mechanism is different between the parasite and the host. So a lot, quite a few of us have been able to take classes in the computer science department just for electives, and it's quite helpful. Like I personally took a GPU programming class, so learning how to write code for gra graphics processing units, and it's good to know how, I guess, GPU code works under the hood, even though I don't personally spend a lot of time writing that code. But since we use it, it's useful to know how it works. Next, you're gonna hear from my lab mate, Matthew, about his work. Hi, my name is Matt. I'm a fourth year graduate student um, in the Shukla group. And the majority of my projects here um, mainly involve the medicine side of things. So what we have here is a little bit of what I'm working on. So it's a membrane protein transporter that's involved in carrying substrates across the uh, membranes of cells. So this is very important in terms of ligand diffusion, substrate diffusion, as well as drug binding. And so what I'm showing here is basically the idea of how membrane pro protein transporters work. So basically you have a protein and a ligand that comes out and enters through the extracellular side. And typically what happens as well is they bind in this pocket and usually some sort of counter ion also comes in as well. And this will trigger a conformational transition to where it kind of closes from the outside and opens on the inside to allow it to be released inside the cell. And so this is how we actually, uh, one of the main ideas in which we simulate our proteins too. In addition to blue wires, we're also a part of the Folding at Home Consortium. So Folding at Home is a distributive computing project in which millions of users across the world can donate their computing power to run simulations for us. So the idea is if, say you have a computer at home, um, and when you're not using it, say when you're sleeping, you can actually donate your computer um, and to allow us to run simulations for, uh, for us. And then that way, it's like building the world's biggest supercomputer, and it's all accessible to us here at 
the group. So one of the things I really enjoy about the department is being able to take many other courses from other departments. And so for my research, I'm able to take a lot of the courses from the computer science department. And that's really helpful too, not only that they're one of the top um, well-known departments in the country, but also they offer a lot of courses that are very helpful to my research, such as bioinformatics and parallel programming. So I'm able to use a lot of these courses um, that I've learned in the CS department to apply them to my research here in chemical engineering. Thanks for coming by to our lab and seeing our lab. We hope to see you soon and take care.